Dance Macabre, a ghost story from the United States of America. Around the year 1845, the army garrison at Fort Union, New Mexico, was a lonely place to be, a small encampment of American soldiers in the middle of a wide and empty desert. At night, you lay awake listening to the coyote's call or the wind whipping across the dry, sandy ground. Outside the fort, the tumbleweed blowing across the ground was often the only moving thing to be seen. As for Fort Union itself, it was a confusion of action and inaction, a small garrison inhabited mostly by men. Few ladies wished or dared to venture to this remote outpost of the Union, but some did. Among those there at the time, there was a very beautiful young lady, the sister-in-law of one of the captains. A coquettish sort of lady, she encouraged the attentions of the young officers, including a certain young lieutenant freshly arrived from Boston. The lieutenant had hardly been at Fort Union for a month before he was madly in love with the young lady, and one winter's evening, as he walked with her in the cool dusk, he proclaimed his love. The lady, not one to discourage attentions, told him that she loved him too. Indeed, she swore him eternal love, just as she had done to several others before. Less than a week after this romantic moment, Fort Union was suddenly on the alert. Indians were approaching and were attacking any white man they encountered. A detachment of soldiers was soon drawn up with orders to intercept the Indians. In charge of the detachment was the young lieutenant. As he rode proudly out of the fort, he called for all to hear, My love, I'll be back soon, and then you'll be mine forever. Two days later, the detachment returned in sad contrast to its heroic departure. All the soldiers were tired and hungry, half of them were injured, and ten, including the lieutenant, were missing. The young lady cried for half an hour, but soon seemed to have got over her grief, and when, after a few days, she appeared in public on the arm of a young captain, no one was very surprised. They were hardly more surprised when, a few weeks later, the captain announced that they were to be married. They didn't wait long. The wedding was fixed for the following weekend. It was to be the biggest social occasion of the year in Fort Union. And so it was. After the ceremony, all the officers and their ladies, the few that there were, gathered for a grand ball. There was food and drink, and the band played. The men and women ate and drank, laughed and danced, and in the middle danced the captain and his bride. It was just before midnight, and the festive spirit was at its highest, when suddenly a strong gust of cool wind blew in through the open doors and windows. Many of the candles were blown out with a sudden rush of air. The big door at the end of the room banged shut, then blew wide open again with a slow creak that made everyone turn to look at it. And there in the doorway stood the lieutenant. Or at least, it looked like the lieutenant, but his clothes were covered in blood, and a big dark cut ran across his forehead. A large section of skin and hair had been cut off his head. It was a terrible sight to see. Everyone in the room froze with fear as the lieutenant entered silently and walked up towards the lady. Reaching her, he took her from the captain and began to dance, slowly at first, but then faster and faster, one by one, the musicians began to play as if driven by some strange force. The couple turned round and round in the half-darkened room, dancing and dancing. The lieutenant was smiling, the face of the lady fixed in terror. 
as they danced, she grew paler and paler, until finally, as the music rose to a frantic crescendo, she fell on the floor. Bending over her, the lieutenant whispered something in her ear, then stood up and walked slowly out through the door he had come in by. It was several minutes before anyone else dared to move or to say anything. Then the captain walked slowly across the floor to the spot where his bride was lying. He picked her up, but quickly let her fall again. She was dead, almost cold. Suddenly everyone was talking. The musicians claimed that a demonic force had forced them to play music they had never played before. Some officers began explaining the strange events, while others swore the lieutenant was a ghost. But with a dead lady in the middle of the room, it was clear that something strange had happened, whatever the explanation was. Next day, soldiers were sent out in all directions to look for the lieutenant. Most soldiers who'd been with him on his last mission swore that he'd been killed by the Indians. And so, one group of men was sent back to where the encounter had taken place. Not far from there, they did indeed find the remains of the lieutenant. Vultures had picked his bones. He'd been dead for several weeks. <laughs>